As you know, guys, I've been recently heads down in side channel attacks that have been recently exploited. It won't be fair if I don't explain previous infamous side channel attacks such as Spectre. So this video will be explaining this attack that I've been taking the word by surprise back in 2018. Let's jump into it. So guys, if you don't know, Spectre is an attack that uh, exploits program to read data from a CPU, from another process that is not supposed to read. So you can read private keys, passwords, credit cards, all sorts of nasty stuff that is stored in the CPU. In order to understand Spectre, we need to understand how CPU cache works. Let's go quickly through it and then explain the attack. So here's how the CPU essentially caches stuff. So let's assume we have a piece of data here, an array SUP sub, right? Three characters. So in memory, when we load this stuff in memory, this is the memory looks like, right? These are the addresses, assume A0, A1, da, 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 da. And this is my application data, SUP. That's what I, you know. however, the memory is shared with everyone, right? This is the stuff that I'm not supposed to access. XYZ is a password, for example, stored by some other process in the same memory, obviously, right? But I don't have access to it right so it has a specific address and all that jazz if i want to access data sub zero which is the value s what will happen here the processor will start asking a question okay where is data sub zero really well it's an a zero the address a zero and that's how we found the memory location for it but going to memory is actually slow we so we before we try to jump the memory so okay do i have this a zero address cached in cpu Eh, well, I never visited this address before, so no, I don't have this address stored in my CPU. So I have to take the hit and go to the memory, and that is slow operation. So I hit the memory, go to the A0, I go through the bus, motherboard, all that jazz, and then retrieve the value S. And now, since I retrieved it, I'm going to go ahead and cache it in my uh, one of the levels of the cache and the CPU level. So now A0, memory location A0 is actually S. I know this, that it didn't change. So now I just stored it. So a subsequent read of the same value, data sub zero, will say, okay, do I have, okay, data sub zero is A1, uh, A0. So, okay, do I have this in the cache? Well, yeah, I do have it, that's S. So I just saved incredible amount of time and that is what specter utilizes it the speed of which getting the value can tell you what the value is now let's exploit this with the specter so how specter really works so the security researcher said okay let's write a piece of software and let's utilize the feature go think of feature that is in the cpu let's call speculative uh, production branch production so what does that mean so we have data, we have the SUP, the value SUP here, and this is my memory, right? What I'm going to do here, I'm going to declare a variable called secret, and I'm going to declare a uh, an integer 100. And now if I do, if i is less than data.length, and we know that i is actually less than data.length, right? Because data.length is S3, and 100 is definitely less than 3. We know that this uh, condition, this branch will never be executed, but CPUs actually don't work like that. They try to be fast. And instead of synchronously trying to evaluate what data.length is, because they don't know, they say, okay, let's assume they actually, uh, the I, uh, I is actually less than length. We don't know, but let's asynchronously evaluate length. And meanwhile, let's just execute this. So they incorrectly go into the branch and execute this thing. What does that mean? That means data sub I is actually 100, which is what? Which is X. This is the part of the private key that we were not supposed to access. And then we take that value, we store it in secret. And as a result, the cache in this case will have the value X, which we're not supposed to see, right? But then obviously the, the speculative uh, uh, evaluation of CPU says, okay, oh, we were wrong. Let me remove that stuff. But the problem is the CPU doesn't remove it. But here's the thing. You might say, well, Hussein, you, you got the value secret just print it right in javascript no that's not how it works because the cpu and the application will protect us right will protect us from accessing data or that we're not supposed to access so it'll not give you the value uh, straight out so we need to trick the cpu to give us the value but without actually giving the value 
Let's find out how. And here's one trick to do it. So we're gonna declare a dictionary of every possible character in Earth. Obviously, since it's a new kind of dictionary, there will be its own memory location, as you can see. There will be its own memory location, its own values, and uh, character A will have value zero, one and two until the all the characters so for simplicity let's just say from a to z okay and they will have obviously new memory location and all that jazz right so what will happen now if i try to get the value all of a well all of a uh, ha is pointing to memory location a 900 is it in my cpu no it's not so i have to go to memory at first it's slow pull that memory cache it in the cpu so i have the value zero which is A900. We're saying, what are you doing? What, what, what are you trying to do? We'll get to that in a minute. So the next step is, what if I now do a all secret? What will happen in this case? Well, what is secret? This will force the CPU to actually go to the cache and say, okay, what's the value of secret? Well, secret is actually X, right? We've found out that long time ago. So, okay. That means I need all of X. What is all of X? Oh, all of X happened to be 24. So let me go and pull the 20. Is, is 24 in a CPU? No, it's not. Let me go pull in the memory and then pull it back. And because we went to the memory, that tells me that the value zero is not equal to the value 24, right? That's the game we're playing here. And we're going to be very clear in a minute. So we move on to the next like, character. Let's pull b now if i pull b what is b well build b is actually value one is it in the cpu no let's go to the memory so i it is slow operation that we know that it's going to be a slow operation because that this is the first time i read the value b which is one in this case right and then go uh 901 right, pull it in the memory write it to the cpu and now let's read secret if secret happened to be slow that means we just hit the memory that means that's not the value that's not the value we just read if it's fast that means we just cached it in the cpu that means that's the value we're looking for that's the trick we're playing here so uh since the secret that we're trying to pull again here is what the value secret is actually x so we know well i and you and i know because we're looking at the presentation but the wh whoever executing the code doesn't yet all right so oh, x oh l of x is 24 pull is 24 in the cache no it's not so let's go to the memory and pull it back now here is the question hussein didn't we just read the secret a, a while ago yes we did and this is where every video i watched on youtube didn't explain this stuff and, and left me just left me with more questions that's because you have as a programmer who write this attack you have to flush the cache Every time you want to try this, flush the cache and try over again. Every time you have to find a way. The the paper, the sp the spectral paper is written so that in C it's like flushing the cache. It's easy. In JavaScript they do a, another trick to actually override the whole CPU Kali with ju junk data, <laughs> so that it forces you to evict all the caches so that you start from scratch. Otherwise, if you if everything is cached, then you you won't you will not execute the attack successfully, right? So let's move on. Now we go on, go on, go on, go on, try B, C, D, E, F, G until we find the actual value, which is X. So we pull X, all of X. What is all of X? OL, all of X is actually 24. Let's pull 24, put in the cache in the CPU, write in the cache. Now follow up with all secret. What's the value of secret? Well, we evicted the cache and we re executed the old code so we can populate it again, right? Obviously. Now we have X in the cache, right? So X, all of X is what? Is a 924 address in my CPU? Well, this is it. It's right there. So poo, right there. Few microseconds got the, got the value immediately. That tells me that the secret value is actually X because we tried all of them and they were slow. When we tried secret, it was fast. That means X is, that's the value that we're actually after. We basically now try the next value and instead of 100 101 let's move to the next one and do the exact same again right and then find x and y and z and technically i can write a, job, a javascript uh, app hosted in my web server html send you the link and i get an exact copy of your memory location with this code 
and I can send it to you, uh, send it to myself with a fetch request. Isn't that scary, guys? That's just absolutely scary. So this was explanation of Spectre attack. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.